this is a shout out to anyone that has ever felt or been told um, that they've been testy, touchy, agitated, grumpy, in a bad mood, cranky, um, bad tempered, ill tempered, ill natured, pissed off, um, cross, angry, um, peeved off, emotional, erratic, short tempered, crabby, pity, impatient, hot tempered, quick tempered, like they have a short fuse that you're stroppy that you're overreacting or feeling like you're prickly being told that you're really impatient um that you're irritable anyone that has felt the extremes of irritability i mean the situations that make you feel ir irritable like when something doesn't go your way or when someone you know does something that really ticks you off but what i am talking about is the extreme irritability that comes with a range of psychological disorders like um you know bipolar disorder um depression borderline personality disorder anxiety and a range of other things that really make you extremely irritable and i've been feeling so irritable lately it's like just being alive makes me irritable and I'm trying to figure out what is making me irritable because I know at times there is a lot of different things that make me irritable. I'm in the midst of like uh, medication changes, you know, medication can cause really irritability side effects as well as a lot of, you know, lifestyle, environmental, situational, um, sociological or emotional triggers as well. And what they find with irritability is that it's really a reaction to certain stimuli. And I find when I can put a reason to my irritability, when someone does something that annoys me, it's really easy to go, okay, that's annoying me, so that's why I'm feeling irritable. But when everything annoys you, it's really hard to accept that. It's really hard to figure out what it is that's, that's causing such annoyance within you. Because if someone's annoying you, you can just avoid them. If work is annoying you, you can avoid them. If a certain task is, is making you feel really irritable and anxious, you can normally just avoid that task or maybe try and do it in a different way that won't trigger this, this irritability with inside you. And it's like anger and frustration and rage that just builds. It just exists within you. And for me, it exists like in my chest. Like I can feel it inside me. It's like a volcano ready to erupt. And I know what it's like. I grew up in a family with two very mentally ill parents. I used to call my mother the dragon lady because she would spit fire with her words. And now as an adult, I can understand why. She probably had a range of um, undiagnosed mental disorders, including PMDD, that caused her to have these rage fits, these sometimes even rage blackouts. Like she wouldn't even know what she had done after the fact. It was like she would just completely black out and she'd just wake up one day and go, why is everyone acting so weird around me? It's like, excuse me, because you've been a crazy psycho bitch um, for the last like week, month, however long. And I think because I grew up in that environment, because I'm a very empathetic person, because I feel really deeply and because I knew what it felt like to be destroyed by her words, by her tornado that she would just become in our household because I knew how painful it was to be on the receiving end of such anger and unjustified rage. I try really hard to make sure that the people in my life don't feel that way. I work really hard to prevent that and I think as a result I really bottle it up. I actually find it really hard to talk about because I feel like the second I open my mouth I don't know what will come out. And I think people ask me what's wrong because it's quite clear that something is really wrong. And when I ignore them, when I tell them nothing is wrong, I'm not trying to cover something up, but I just don't have the words. I don't have the explanation that those people are seeking. And that's really, really hard to be in that position where people are looking for answers that you just don't have. And I've spent a lifetime trying to search for those answers, trying to make it easier to explain to people what is going on because how else will I make them understand but it's really hard to make someone else understand something that you don't even understand yourself and I think when I get irritable I'm actually quite scared 
I know people talk about irritability and anxiety, for example, in this flight or fight response. I've heard that, that phrase so many times, it just makes me want to vomit. But I think it's really true. I am, I've done a lot of dog psychology work, um, a lot of dog training, and I know that, for example, a dog can develop severe aggression um, when it's frightened. It, it's not like a, a regular aggression. It might not be an aggressive dog, but it will, it will have aggressive traits when it feels like it's trapped, when it's uncomfortable, when it's in a situation that it's not okay with. So I often feel like that. I feel like I'm in a situation that I can't explain, a situation that makes me feel really uncomfortable and I can't fix it. I can't get rid of that situation because a lot of the time it's within myself. And I think this anger and frustration builds within me. And you can't escape that. I've spent years trying to run from myself. I've spent years trying to run from my problems. And when you come to that heartbreaking conclusion that it's just you, that what you're terrified most of is within you, it's really hard to deal with that. And I think it's really, really hard to even get therapy for that. You know, I have this incredible self-awareness and everybody likes to remind me that that is a really good thing. And I agree, it, it is a good thing. It does allow me to try and figure out what is wrong and, and what is making me feel that way in that moment so I can go about problem solving it. But the trouble is when there's not a solution to your problem, when you can't exactly figure out, you know exactly how you feel, but you can't figure out why you feel like that, it becomes a really bad thing. I'm always super aware of what I feel, my heart rate, the way my body feels, the way my veins pulse with, with venom, the way it burns, the way it's like sandpaper rubbing against my skin. When I am irritable, I am fully aware of how irritable I am. And I think that kind of makes the situation a lot worse. Some people associate irritability with these extreme outbursts. Um, they show their, their irritable nature in these external ways. And some people really internalize that irritability, especially when, you know, the, the, the anger and the frustration in, in their situation into what is going on with them, you know, they really internalize about themselves. And I think that's how it manifests in things like self-harm, um, you know, in a, in a range of different destructive behaviors because you really don't want to be like this. And I just had this psychological session and um, it just reconfirmed my hate of a certain word. And that is called acceptance or what some psychologists like to call radical acceptance. Now, I'm constantly being told you just need to accept your situation or ask the most patronizing question I think anybody could ever ask you. Have you tried accepting your circumstances? Have you tried accepting yourself? Have you tried accepting your symptoms? Now what the fuck is acceptance? Acceptance is just this like really crazy concept. It's like this unspoken thing. And I don't understand why people even question have you accepted your, your situation. It's like would I fucking be here? if I hadn't accepted that particular situation. So doctors and therapists and even just people in the general community always like to put this thing of acceptance. And I just think if I hadn't accepted my situation, would I really be seeking therapy? Would I really be taking medication? Would I really be researching how to help my situation if I didn't believe it exist? I mean, if you don't accept the fact that you're mentally ill, would you be seeking treatment? Like where would you be? Like, I think the opposite of acceptance is denial. Am I wrong to think that? I'm definitely not in denial about what I face. And, you know, when people say to me, yes, but Jess, you just need to accept that these are the struggles that you face. You just need to accept that you have these illnesses. You just need to accept that these symptoms are there and these symptoms are real. And I'm kind of like, what the fuck do you think I do every second of every day? Like, of course I accept my symptoms. Of course I accept that this is the way that I feel because I am so desperate to change it. But are you asking me to sit there and accept it and, and, and not want to change it? Like, are you asking me to go, this is the way that I am and this is the best that I will ever be? Because if that is what you are asking of me, then you are asking me far too much. 
I accept that these are the struggles that I face. I accept that this is who I am as a person. And, and, and I accept that I have this illness. And I accept that at times it is very irrational. But I am not going to stand by and let it rule my life. I'm not going to stand by and let myself become this, this irritable monster. I don't think you should accept your circumstances to a point where it promotes a lack of action. Just because you want to fix your circumstances doesn't mean that you're not accepting them for what they are. Like, I'm the queen of fucking acceptance. And it really makes me angry when people accuse me of not accepting it. And I don't think acceptance and wanting to change your situation are so different to me people who don't accept things you know they're people that are in complete denial and i think every day i wake up and i have the self-awareness to say okay today i'm really irritable things are really annoying me and i know that they're not rational and i don't want to feel this way but i do and i think that is a form of acceptance um, I'm not sure if that's the same as what they call radical acceptance, but I just think it's a really ridiculous word, um, and it's a really ridiculous concept. I agree that at times I, 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 I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be ill. I don't want to be irritable. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to take medication. There's a lot of things that I don't want to do, but I do it anyway. Doesn't that mean that I'm accepting my circumstances? I mean, you can accept your circumstance and still want to change it. I don't want to be irritable and filled with anger and rage. And I want to get to the bottom of it. And I don't think getting to the bottom of it is the wrong thing. Because if you can get to the bottom of something, you can figure out why it's happening. And you can fix it. Um, I understand where they're coming from, where they're like, okay, just right now, you're really irritable. But I think there's a point where you've been irritable for more than a day for more than a week for more than a month man you've been fucking so irritable for like the last 10 years of your life you don't even know what it's like to not overreact in every single situation because you're just triggered by absolutely everything around you i just i really struggle with the irritability because the irritability triggers this like not wanting to live in my mind i accept that it's there I don't want it to be there because if I guess irritability sucks the enjoyment out of everything around me and if I can't enjoy the world that I live in, if I can't enjoy the life that I'm living, then what is the point of living at all?